All creation groans and travails in pain until now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. When Adam and Eve fell, all of material creation fell with us, since it is all subject to us and is our inheritance. Part of this is based upon what we call the principle of redundancy. That is, that which is higher redounds to that which is lower. So when man, who is disordered to God, that is, he disobeyed God, it was right that that within man should disobey man. That is, that's why we have emotions that won't be subject to our reason. But it also means that in relationship to material creation, that is, with animals and plants and all of creation, it too became affected because of our sin. Because our sin redounded to them because we are their masters. And what are these effects? Well, we know some of the other effects of original sin, which I'm not going to talk about now, but there are specific sins, some of them called the non-moral effects of sin, which have affected the material created order. The first is that the material order is somewhat disordered like we are. Prior to the fall, all animals, all of material creation, obeyed and served man without reserve. Now it is not so, because the lower is no longer subject to the higher. And it is a fact that now animals can be dangerous to us, whereas before Adam and Eve fell, they were not dangerous to us, but would do our every beckoning. After the resurrection, the material creation will be perfected and subject to our will. But as it is now, it is a bit disordered because of us. And there is some indication that even as we continue and advance in our sin, that is, as we become more sinful, the material order becomes more disordered as a result of it. Because again, our sins become manifest in the material created order. They are subject to us, and ultimately they are our inheritance. We also know that the whole of the material created order is ordered towards man, approximately God remotely, but it's ordered towards us and our use. If all of material creation falls with man, as St. Paul says, all material creation will rise with man. We are not certain whether animals and the, and the like will exist after the resurrection, even though the earth will. That seems to be clear from we see in the, old, in the New Testament where it says there will be a new heavens and a new earth. But does this mean that there will be animals? Some saints don't think so, but it seems to me that one of the manifestations of God's perfections in the created order is the hierarchy of all of the created beings, so that each perfection or the perfections of God are manifest in the variety of different ways in the different animals and the different plants and in the different physical things. And therefore it would seem appropriate that the hierarchy of being would be restored. That is, all the hierarchy of animals from the lowest to the highest would be restored as a manifestation of God's perfection. But this is, of course, my own theory. Shared by a few, but it's still just a theory. We don't know in the end. The disorder in the material created or universe is our fault. Now, we have come across today a false environmentalism, which has this idea that the environment is something that should be sought for its own sake, and that ultimately man is there for the sake of the environment, not the environment for the sake of man. These things are not there for themselves. They're there for us. God created the material things for our use and our benefit, not the other way around. Today we tend to see that people panic at even just the slightest bad report about the environment. And it's a sign or a rejection of the divine providence. God created the material universe for our use, which means that he designed it for the type of use that we're making of it. So what's this mean? It means in the end, as I tell the seminarians, God wanted us burning fossil fuels. He wanted us to eat animals, not before the fall, which we'll talk about in a bit, but after the fall, he had every intention for us to burn fossil fuels. If he didn't want us burning fossil fuels, he wouldn't have put them there. And he put a lot of them there, which meant he wanted us burning a lot of them. Now, that doesn't mean that you waste them, it just means that God created the planet which we live on, the material universe, to be able to sustain us in our activities. And to deny that, is, that is to be panicking about everything that happens in the materially created order, or universe, 
is nothing short of a denial or a lack of faith in God's providence. He provides. Now, that doesn't mean, again, that we don't abuse the environment inappropriately. Why? Not because it's an end in itself, but because when we affect the environment, we affect other human beings. So what we do to the environment, we, we have a proper moral outlook on it, not for the sake of the environment, but because of the effect it has on other human beings. So you don't pollute the environment in a way that is in it that's going to have a very adverse effect on human beings. But at the same time, God still intended for us to use the environment for our benefit. So we, can't, we have to be able to have a proper balance which is moderated according to prudence and according to virtue, which seems to be in short su- uh, supply these days. Also, because man turn away from God, who is the source of all good, who provides for us, we are left, we left ourselves unprovided for in a certain sense when Adam and Eve fell. So with the animals. The animals also suffer from what our disorder has caused. They now starve. They grow hungry. They're subject to illness and death. Although whether they died before the fall to feed others is not clear, but it doesn't seem to be so or at least it seems to be lacking as we read in Genesis. Plants and animals are not as fruitful as they used to be than they were before the fall. Physical things are harder to work with because of our weakness, because of the fall. In other words, the physical created universe became a bit unruly, a bit difficult for us to handle, just as we had become unruly in relationship to God. And yet there are other non-moral effects that even affect us. For instance, we get tired because of the fall. Before the fall, Adam and Eve never got tired, regardless of what they did. There seems to be some indication from the theologians that eating meat is a result of the fall. From the scriptural accounts, Adam and Eve were vegetarians. We are not, however, because we need the extra food and nutrition from meat which Adam and Eve would have gotten from vegetables. In other words, man's body had changed and so he now needed to eat meat as a greater supply for food and also to absorb nutrients which he may not be able to get merely by being a vegetarian. If you're a vegetarian because you think eating meat is evil, it's not Catholic and it's disordered. I tend to subscribe, I know this is kind of a lowly remark, but I tend to subscribe to the Homer Simpson theory of animals which is, if God didn't want us eating animals, why did he make them of meat? Now, it seems a little silly on the face of it, but it's true. If God didn't want us eating certain things, he didn't make them so that we could ingest them, for instance, grass. He doesn't want us eating grass, so we don't go around eating grass, because we can't break down grass in our stomachs. Animals are a bit different. So, if you're a vegetarian because you think it's evil, that's just disordered. Because God had intended for us to use these things after the fall. That is, he made it possible for us to eat them. So eating meat isn't a bad thing. Now, if somebody's a vegetarian for for ascetical reasons, that is, for instance, the Carmelites have what they call the holy abstinence, which they refrain from all meat, but that's a form of self-denial of something which is good. People who think that that eating animals is bad... Sorry, that's not, what the, that's not why the Carmelites do it. That's not why Catholics do it. We abstain from meat precisely from its good to bring ourselves, our bodies, more into subjection. Or I can see not eating certain kinds of meat if someone has a dietary problem in relationship to them. That's understandable. But if they, again, if they're not eating them because they think it's evil, it's just disordered. We must now use material creation in different ways than in the past since our needs for food remain and our needs for health, to cure sickness. The, these things have changed since the fall, because now we do, before the fall we didn't have these problems, but now we do. So we must make use of different resources, but the fact that they are there is a sign of God's providence. It is not a sign that man is evil because of their use, unless he wastes it or uses the material created universe in a way that's inappropriate. When we see the material order disordered, That is a reflection of our own disorder. The more ordered we are, the more ordered use we will make of the created order. After the resurrection, the material order will be perfected and will no longer labor under our disorder because we will no longer be disordered. 
Therefore, if we want a rightly ordered, materially created universe and its right use, then we ourselves have to get ourselves together morally. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.